What's up, you guys? Welcome to the channel. For those that don't know, my name is Alina Smith. I'm a writer and producer for projects like Itzy, Red Velvet, Produce 101, My Teenage Girl, now called Classy, and many, many others. As you can probably tell, I work on a lot of K-pop. And today, we are going to be doing exactly that. I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can produce a pop R&B type of K-pop song, probably something in the style of Red Velvet. Now, before you get into that, if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button for a lot of useful, I think useful, tutorials on how to produce and write songs. Okay guys, so I'm actually going to be walking through uh, the production of a song that I've had released this past week. So originally the song was written at an SM writing camp, I believe for Red Velvet, and then they didn't take it sadness. <laughs> but this really wonderful group in Spain called Sweet California recorded it. It's on their new record called Land of the Free. The song is called Famous, it's right here. Um, I really love the production of this song. It's very much that kind of like Red Velvet SM style. So even though a Western group did record it, I think it still very much has that essence. So yeah, without further ado, let's just jump straight into the production. Okay guys, so I have this song here, a word of warning, I did not record Sweet California's vocals, so I don't have them, so I will be playing you guys the demo instead with Ellie's vocals in it. Uh, and I guess the way we'll do this is I'll just go through the song and talk about each section, and let's hope I remember what I did because I produced this like a year and a half ago, so at this point it will be a surprise for me as well. <laughs> so let's check it out. I know you see the cameras flashing I know you see me on your magazines I know with everybody watching It's become my favorite scene I know they're rolling out the carpet So I can pose for you like I'm a queen Don't you bow down, baby It's your turn now so this is the first. I, I definitely remember writing this and being really excited by the chord progression. Like the chords and also like their movement. I really like how quick it was. So this is the main synth right here. Yeah, as you can see, it is pretty interesting the way this is produced. There's like this triplet at the end and also none of the chord notes are exactly on the beat. Like it's almost like a like a little arpeggio here, which I don't even know how this translates and why I decided to do that. Yeah, I think it just makes it a little less perfect, like imperfect on purpose. So, and as you can see here, I'm glad this is frozen because some things are missing. I updated to Ableton 11 since I produced this. So some of the plugins I've used are gone. I can't access them. So, but this batch is from Serum as you can see, and it has this really light touch of replica delay, which I no longer have <laughs> and no longer use, but it just adds a little bit of movement to it. Oh yeah, and I see we're lif lifting a filter as well on it. You can, um, I don't know if you can see it moving here. Yeah, 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 there's just like a, uh, EQ filter sweeping in. So that's a big part of that sound. And then we have the 808 come in right with the verse. So yeah, this is just Sub Lab, um, which I still use and love. I love these kind of short 808s. It's very much holding back on purpose in this verse, just really letting that synth and the vocal breathe. I know you see the cameras flashing I know you see me on your magazines I know what the And I have the snap here oh, That's all I got on it, really I, I didn't even layer this with anything It's interesting to me that I didn't do that This production is so simple, you guys, it's crazy Yeah, and there's a little bit of a tom fill right here Like an 808 tom That's fun Become my favorite scene Yeah, I love how, like, round those types of toms sound. That's really, really fun. So, and then I 
believe we have a kick coming in here. I hate old sessions, you guys, because I just the way this is laid out, I lay things out differently. I put my kicks in a different part of a group so I know where they are. And here I'm like, where where is this? What is this? <laughs> what is happening? Um, and yeah, no, I think I lied. I don't think there's a kick. I think I'm just adding more snares. Yeah. Oh, no, there is. There's like a little hollow acoustic kick, almost like a stomp. Interesting. And then there's one more snare right here. Oh, interesting. Okay, I see. So it looks to me that I cut up a loop from this Nathan Chapman kit. Is that what it is? Yeah. Um, this country kit on Splice. And then I just put the kicks on their own channel and I put the snares on their own channel. So I'd have a little bit more control over them. That makes a lot of sense. Queen, don't you bow down, baby. It's your turn now. So yeah, and then here we have the transition to the pre-chorus with just a simple suite. I'm really surprised by how simple this production is in this verse. I know it gets a little bit like bigger and there's more stuff going on, but yeah, the verse is just really letting the vocal shine. Turn now. You've been so good to me, love. Want you to enjoy the applause. The attention will never stop. Cause my heart is all for you. You want Yeah, so I, I do love like the changes on the song. It kind of reminds me of like old school Ariana Grande, like 2013. Uh, it just has this, or like Mariah Carey even. It's just like nostalgic, cute feeling. I, I do like that. So, and when I first pulled up the session just like a few minutes ago, <laughs> there was things missing, honey. Um, and these aren't even, I still use Spire, still use Contact, but these are like older versions of the plugins used here. So I just pulled in the stems. Um, so I have just these pianos that are coming in, piano chords. And this is just like a contact kit that I use a lot. And then this is a pattern spire. Oh, she do be thick. She is thick. I love I love kind of the tremolo effect too. Did I tremolate this or was it like that? Oh yes, I did. I did tremolate it. I know myself as a producer really well. I'm like, I bet I did this just by looking at the waveform. So and we have a little bit of an impact here. Oh, I love that. I love it. I love these kind of like tiny impacts that don't have any bottom end, any low frequencies. Um, just, <laughs> it's pretty fun. So, and then the vocal, we still have, at least on the demo, a single vocal, which, um, you know, this kind of shows you, right? Like these are the state of the vocals where we, like got the song placed. So they're good, but it isn't like harmony on every line and a double in every line, at least in this verse is pretty simple. Um, these background vocals come in though, which I really like right here. And this is something I do a lot. Valhalla Shimmer is like my life for these kind of airy, widespread kind of pad-like vocals. Um, so I usually use this and then use something like the 1073 from UAD to just brighten it up. And then I think I'm even brightening it up more. <laughs> that's a lot. Shoddy, that's a lot. I'm <laughs> surprised. I usually do a little bit less now, but it's funny how our, um, our tastes shift as we grow. A couple of years ago, I liked brighter vocals than I like now. It's interesting, but let's listen to the chorus. Cause my heart is all for you You wanna take the time to live it up Wanna give you love, you know that I'll make you feel famous I'll make you feel famous I'll love you, love you Like no one ever, ever loved you Oh no, you know I'll make you feel famous I'll make you feel famous I'll make you famous Yeah, I do. Ah, it's so fun. I love this course and this post. Um, so there's a lot going on uh, in comparison to the verse, for sure. Um, we still have the synth going on the same as was in the verse. We also have this. What is this? Oh, I love. I love this. This is just... Um, Basically, this chord progression with these sort of chromatic walking chords, this just happens once in the middle of the chorus, which is such a K-pop move, you guys, to just throw like a really jazzy progression once in the chorus and never, ever 
like put it anywhere else again. I think that's so fun. I love moments like that in songs. Personally, as a listener, anytime something kind of unusual like that happens, I go, ooh, it like makes me remember the song. So yeah, and this is just basically serum. And then again, I'm using this Equalize plugin just to create a filter sweep. You don't have to use this plugin. You can use literally any EQ. It's really easy. Yeah, and I have this bell too on top. Just emphasizing this moment. Oh, it's cute. I love this. Also serum. I used a lot of serum on this. Fun, 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 fun. And then I have these piano stabs, right? Yeah. It's the same um, piano that I was using in the pre-chorus. Obnoxious Crunchy Piano. I love that title. Too bad it's broken now. <laughs> and I can't use it in anything new. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the tonals. It's not as much as you would think. And then I have more of a longer 808 coming in, also sublab. I like that it has some rhythm too. It isn't just all held notes. It moves quite a bit. And then we have a lot of drums. All the blue is drums. Let's just kind of look. Oh, clave. I love that because that gives it that R&B sort of feeling using a lot of these sounds that are sort of from uh, vintage keyboards like a clave like this it immediately makes me think of like 90s I don't know R&B 2000s R&B like Monica oh that's so cute listening to this solo is fun I think I repitched it manually I just grabbed it and like changed the pitches of this to fit the song which is really fun and then I have just some hats some 808 hats Nice, nice, got a crash up here. Oh, that's cool. And I'm just using uh, Ableton's internal pitching engine to go just transpose it down. Uh, that is pretty fun. I got a triangle here. That's a fun move. That's also very R&B. I haven't done this in a while. I don't think I've layered like a triangle with a crash to like make it seem like it's part of the crash. That's pretty fun. <laughs> Oh yeah, so I got a lot of these like random percussive sounds. If you listen to them as group, these three. This one's actually like paper being crinkled. It's foley. I love that. I love that. Um, and then we have, what is this? I, I love these old sessions where I'm like, I have no idea what's in the hair. Like zero. Okay, just some boom boom like metallic hits whatever this is extra percussion oh this is cool i've i've done this a lot i still do this a lot i layer my kicks with like a kick top basically like a click to make them cut through the mix a little bit better like without it with it it's a big difference especially with everything in you can like really tell oh that's cool i'm using like a very gnarly organic key kind of stomp to really emphasize the first bar uh, and of course I've got a snare but also I'm adding I'm gonna guess like an 808 snare here yeah exactly there's like an 808 snare here and then there's this one just just a wider snare this is a good trick if you've got like a narrower instrument pairing it with a wider one underneath it especially if it's something percussive that works really well. It creates dimension. I use this trick like all the time. <laughs> and then as far as vocals, vocals, let's see what's in here. Um, and yeah, just reminding you guys again, this is the demo. This is not Sweet California's version. I don't have their vocals, but I do think, I think their version has more vocals, but it is like based on this arrangement. You want to take the time to live it up. Want to give you love. You know that I'll make you feel famous. I'll make you feel... Yeah, so we've got immediately some doubling going on. You know, we've got Ellie's lead here, but we also have two doubles. You want to take the time to... Sp spread left and right just to make it feel bigger. We also have lows. I wonder if these are created or sung. You want to take the time to live it up. Want to give you love. I love that she messed up the lyrics. It's so funny. <laughs> you find these little imperfections and demos all the time. But yeah, she's saying the low, which sometimes I just pitch it down. But it's a different sound. It's a more like mechanical type sound. I think for this song, which is very much like a throwback, 
it's nice that she's saying it, and I'm sure the girls speak out for when you sing it as well. So we've got some harmony moments here. Love you, love you. Yes. Love you. Yeah, especially that I, that moment where we had the walking synths, it's also emphasized with the vocal. Um, pretty cool, pretty cool. Yeah, and then there's not a whole lot of harmony going on yet. Yeah, but then when the post comes in, there is actually, there's not a lot of harmony either. Interesting. I thought there was more. I think I just listened to the girls' version and they have more vocals in theirs and if you want to check that out um you definitely should and you can but uh what's interesting about this is that this was definitely enough to like present the song to them so you can kind of see maybe listen to this and then listen to their version so you can see the difference uh, in the demo stage versus the final stage oh this is see this is where the created low comes in it's a different sound and it's very like it can affect very deliberately chosen. Yeah, that's very much deliberate. All those are famous, all of that stuff. It's supposed to kind of feel like very mechanical in a way. And it does. Um, and then as far as production, rental production. Ooh, we have a lot of stuff coming in. We've got our favorite triangle coming back in and the 808 crash. Every Every bar, that's interesting to me. Oh, I forgot all the things that were in here. I'm like, it's funny to me. I'm looking around like, where's all this stuff? Okay, so there's these synths right here that are just in the post. Again, serum. And then we've got another sawtooth kind of vibe from serum. Ah. And you can see, you know, me using the filter on both of them at the same time to create these kind of like, oh, comes in and out vibe. Watch this. Yeah, I just wanted something different, something that makes it feel like it's moving even more than it is already. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, so the 808s are like very much whole note 808s, but they kind of have these transition sweeps at the ends to again help it feel like something's happening. Oh, it's moving. Oh, it's moving. <laughs> it's a good trick. I use that one a lot too. Yeah, and then we just have kind of the same things, you know, the snares, the stomps, the kick pattern is a little bit different. Right? Yeah, it gets a little bit busier. I believe, I believe. So, and then yeah, we have some interesting kind of effects going on like this stuff here. I think there's one more right here too. Yeah, just these, this is the one section of the song that I wanted it to feel K-pop. It's funny that it ended up not being recorded in K-pop, but in Western. But to me, like all of these types of sounds that are a little bit unusual, that screams K-pop. So yeah, let's check out the rest of the song. I think the biggest difference here is that I've added like a four on the floor kick, which I'm trying to see where that is. I hate old sessions where I just don't know like what I did and where it is. Uh, oh, there you go, verse kick. There it is right there. You can see that it's a four on the floor um, right here. Yeah, it's, you know, it's slow. It's 93 BPM. It's not going to feel like oomps, oomps, oomps in the club, <laughs> but it is definitely like helping it move. Can I shine it like a diamond? And then, yeah, I'm adding more notation in the bass. Bum, bum, bum. Dun, dun, dun. Where the first verse, it was just like, boom, boom. I think it was just like at the top of every bar. And then I have this walk up here too. So those, I think, are the main differences and everything else is pretty similar. Yeah, there's a couple of really fun moments here harmonically. Yeah, this uh this one has quite a bit of harmony. If we check this out. 
very nice. Ellie's just singing her butt off with those high harmonies. And then we have this too. I added some mid rangey stuff just to really fill out that moment. Don't be scared now. Don't be scared now. Yeah, that's, you know, and I have the, these different types of processing. Uh, this different type of processing on these BGVs versus those. Those are the ones that are supposed to be like, oh, really airy, really like wet reverb wise. And those are a little bit more dry and a little more like discernible, I suppose. So yeah, and then we just have the pre, the course, the post again. I'm pretty sure it's the same. And then we have this bridge, which is new. We wrote this, I think, like three months ago because the girls at Sweet California were like, wait, this doesn't have a bridge. And we kind of didn't even know because the song was so old to us at that point that we were like, oh, shoot, like it really doesn't have a bridge. So we whipped this up, wrote this bridge, um, and that's the latest addition to the song. It's really funny for me to look at this. I can just see like my organization is so like different than it was in 2020. But yeah, um, this is really simple, guys. I, we just wrote some new chords. We wanted it to be a departure, which for this style of song, especially if you're pitching to K-pop, definitely write some soulful chords for the bridge. Okay, yeah, so we've got like a Celeste, I wanna say from Keyscape. I think I could unfreeze this because I know it's newer. <laughs> it's not going to be broken. Oh, look at that. Shoddy knows her instruments. <laughs> it was a Celeste. Um, and then, yeah, this is also, I haven't, it's new to me to have uh, Roland since. Uh, I didn't have them back when we first started this. So this Jupiter is, is really, really good. Big fan. Quite authentic sounding. Um, and then I have even this coming in too. What is this? Ah. Higher octave to emphasize this kind of stabby walk up. Makes sense. I got the sub lab. S makes sense. <laughs> got some kicks, got some snares. Um, and then just a bunch of percussion layered in. Let's just hear. Oh, this is fun. I love a lot of stuff that feels like really organic and like chewy like that. Um, that sounds really fun solo. And just to scope through the uh, the stems. This is like a flamenco type clap. Just a really organic lo-fi-ish type percussion. This is almost like a Latin percussion layered in. Nice. Oh, and then I just got like noise. I think this is like crinkling kind of paper again. It's fun. And then I just got sweeps into the last chorus. All right, guys, and that's pretty much it. That's how I produce this song. As always, if you have questions, do ask them down below. I will answer. And if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on your post notifications so you don't miss any videos from me. And on that note, I'm gonna go. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.